everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Voxelab Proxima 8.9. It's a mid-size 4K mono screen resin 3D printer that's budget friendly, coming in at only $360 over on Amazon. And the best part is it actually prints really well and I think that's pretty magical. And speaking of magical, today's video is sponsored by Magic Spoon Cereal. If you're anything like me, you love tasty sweet cereal, and today's sponsor, Magic Spoon, makes cereal that's actually good for you, and it tastes amazing. They have four great flavors to choose from, frosted, peanut butter, coca, and fruity. They all taste amazing, but I am addicted to fruity and frosted. I like to eat mine with almond milk or plain in a baggie as a great afternoon snack. Magic Spoon cereals have zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four net grams of carbs, and only 140 calories per serving. They're also keto friendly, which I love, gluten free, soy free, grain free, and low carb. Make sure to click the link down below to get some Magic Spoon cereal for yourself and use the code Uncle Jesse to save $5 off your order. Magic Spoon is so confident that you're gonna love their cereal that is backed by a 100% happiness guarantee, meaning that if you're not 100% happy with your purchase, they'll refund your order, no questions asked. And again, make sure to use the code Uncle Jesse at checkout to save $5 off your order or visit magicspoon.com slash Uncle Jesse to pick up your own Magic Spoon cereal. And thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. I honestly love this cereal and was so excited that they reached out. In terms of pricing, this might be one of the lowest ends of the resin 3D printers in this mid-size category where you can actually get a mono screen 4K resolution printer. And again, happy to say that it is actually printing really well and I've been working with it since I think October and have been using it pretty much consistently primarily for processing orders that I've had online, and it's done a really decent job. I should also mention that Voxel Lab sent this over me for review purposes, and again, been using it for the past handful of months. I have purchased a few of their other units off of Amazon for video content here that I've shown off in previous videos. And again, this appears to be a really great entry level category of machines that they're continuing to crank out that's at a relatively high quality. They do have a pro version of the same machine that's slightly more, I think it's like $40 more expensive than this. And I honestly can't tell what's in the pro version. But with this one here, you have a 8.9 inch mono 4K resolution screen, which is the same standard size that you're seeing on things like the Elgu Saturn and things like the uh, Anycubic Mono X. And this has a decent build volume of 192 by 120 by 200. And as you can see here, I've got two fairly large busts that were able to print on this build volume of the printer, which almost maxed it out. The other benefit for anybody out there that's interested in a resin 3D printer is that this is sporting a mono screen, which means it should last longer. Those screens are consumables and you're gonna have to replace them after a certain set number of hours of using them. And it's a mono screen, so that means it's gonna last longer and it allows you to print a good bit faster than the traditional resin 3D printers that are out there. And again, at a budget price. It does appear to be running with a standard Chi2 based board here, so it's gonna work with Chi2 box. It is using a .fdg, I believe is the file format that it exports to for its files that it's sliced with. I have no idea why they've chosen that file format. It's, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a little odd to me. That's not the standardized CTB format that you see with most of the printers that are out there. Uh, not that it's a huge deal or anything. That's just a different file format, but the, it's got the standard 3.5 inch touchscreen interface. Again, very similar to what you've seen on other touchscreen interfaces on those Chi2 based boards. There are a few different things in there that I did want to call out. It does have a tank clean feature, but it's not called tank clean. It's called residue for some odd reason. I don't know why. And one of the coolest things that's on this unit that I have not seen, I think on any other resin 3D printer that I've worked with, is if you go under the system setting, there is a print data option there that's gonna let you know how many layers that you've printed with on this machine. That's incredible. That's sort of giving you a lifetime of how much you've been printing with this machine, and you can reset that. 
Now, the reason why you can reset that option is because it also displays something else that I've never seen on any other printer before, is a warning that after you reach a certain threshold of printing, it's gonna warn you that you need to change out your FEP sheet. And I don't know if that works entirely as designed because I was getting that very early on in my printing process here while working with the machine. And I have yet to change the FEP sheet, but yeah, my FEP sheet is continuing to be fine. I'll continue to use this until I wear through it and need to swap it out. But it's just incredible to see that on this machine, versus not on any of the other machines. And I'm assuming it's something that's there in the Qi2 systems that could be enabled by other machines. And it's just, I'm so honestly surprised I haven't seen it anywhere else. And this is the first time seeing it. When looking at the vat, it is an all aluminum or metal vat here. It's not a plastic vat that I was assuming at this price point, we might see a plastic vat with this, but no, it's a, it's a really nice high quality vat. And one of the best things about it is that it has those feet on the bottom that we've seen on things like the Elgu Saturn, which allows you to take the vat off and set it down on your table and not have to worry about the FEP sheet sitting directly against your tabletop surfaces. One thing I wish the vat did have is a little pour spout but it's not the end of the world. The build plate is decent and works well. I've had lots of print successes with this and not a lot of issues with prints not sticking to the build plate. There are the four bolts that you're gonna see on the side for leveling this and keeping it secure, along with the single bolt at top. There are the two small handles at top as well so that you can easily take this off and hold it as you're printing and removing your prints from the printer. Two issues that I have with this particular build plate, you're gonna end up with resin pooling on that flat surface there and there's no easy way to clean it out other than just tilting the build plate back and letting it pour out. The other issue I have with it is the bolts that are going through the top to secure it run all the way through. So on the bottom side, you have four holes that you're dealing with and I constantly have cured resin filling in there and you need to be extra careful that when you remove your prints that there's not any sharp residual resin stuck in those holes. If you decided to go with something like a wham bam slap mat, one of those flexible build plates, that would completely negate that issue as well. The printer is also sporting the dual linear rails, so it's gonna provide you some really nice stable printing. The USB port is on the side, on the back is where they're gonna find the power switch as well as the power supply plug. I should also mention that unfortunately I lost my micro SD card that housed a number of the footage of me initially printing all these, including print times. And for some of these, I just don't know what the print time was for them, as well as I don't have the footage showing it coming off of the build plate. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is what resin 3D printer should I get for printing miniatures? And this is a fantastic machine option. If you're just looking to run out and print a bunch of miniatures, I went and printed some of these here from Arch Villain Games. These were from, I think they're October or November Patreon release. So it's a few months old here. I also didn't do the best job of cleaning these. So apologies again for some of these up close shots. This larger bust was printed in three parts and is completely solid and is, has some really nice heft to it. And I was a little nervous to see if this would have actually printed and very, again, happy with the results that I'm seeing off of the Proxima 8.9. I then was able to print this Dune Chris knife in three different parts on the build volume of this machine. And I was amazed to see that I was able to actually get this all to fit. Is it the best looking print that I've done? No, by far, no, no. Uh, up top towards the end of the blade there, I'm seeing lots of layer lines. Uh, I mean, it's easily adjusted with a little bit of sanding, but overall, again, the print looks fantastic. I wish I knew who designed this. I got it off of Nico Industries last year around the time the movie released, and unfortunately, I no longer have access to see who actually created this file. So if you know who was on Nico Industries that made this file, let me know in the comments because I would love to have like a link to where someone else can pick this one up. Fantastic file. This next one is from one of my new favorite Patreons that I've recently found out about a handful of months ago. And this is a Batman statue from Doses 3D. The level of detail on this, I think turned out great. Again, not the best looking resin 3D print and way better than anything I'd be able to print on an FDM 3D printer. And I could have done a little better job actually cleaning this, but I'm happy to see how well it all came together. 
And my latest prints were some last minute ones that I wanted to print before filming this video. And these are two busts, one by Fotis Mint and then the other by Wexter. I'm also very impressed by this Fotis Mint bust because of all of the minimal supports that are used on this and that it printed properly. All of those supports are done by Charo Zuck who works alongside Photos Mint doing a little pre-supported action there. And then I manually supported this Peacemaker bust by Wexter. Now the big question comes down to, should you consider this machine that's at a lower price point than something like the Elgu Saturn or the Anycubic Mono X or many of the other mid-size printers that are out there? And if you're a little cash strapped, I would say, yeah, go for this. I'm seeing really great results off of this machine. Is it as good as some of the other printers that are out there? Maybe not, but it's comparable. It's able to produce some really decent looking prints that I would be extremely happy with if I purchased this machine for myself. Now, the one big issue that I have, and again, it's not a major one, is that build plate with the holes on the underside where I constantly have resin that's getting stuck in there that I'm cleaning out and there's that concern that it's going to puncture the FEP sheet if you don't properly clean that out in between your prints. One thing I'm gonna try and focus on in the upcoming months is doing that big throwdown between all of these different mid-size 3D printers and seeing which one comes out on top. Overall, if you're on a tight budget and looking to get into resin 3D printing, this is a great starting place for you that's gonna allow you to print a variety of things and again, it has that 4K mono screen, which is a fantastic offering at that price point. If you're interested in more information about the Voxelab Proxima 8.9, you'll find links to that down below, as well as links to all the files that I've shown off here in today's video. Also, if you're interested in my resin settings, you can find those over on my Patreon. And a huge thank you to all my Patreon members for your continued support. But let me know down below what you think of the Proxima 8.9 and if you'd be interested in me covering other budget-friendly resin 3D printer options. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.